Hello YouTube fam, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina and I make videos on lifestyle, home, and DIY projects every single week. If you guys are anything like me and you have a bunch of cardboard boxes laying around the house, then this video is for you. I'm not sure if it's because I'm a hoarder or I'm being resourceful, but I love saving cardboard because there's so many different things that you could DIY. So today I wanted to show you some project ideas using cardboard. These are super simple and also look high end. You can totally take these techniques and customize it to your own personal style, so I think that you're going to love the projects. Before we get into it, I want to thank Best Fiends for sponsoring today's video. I was actually really excited when they reached out to partner with me because it's a game that I already play. Especially if I have any downtime in between projects, I like to open the app and just unwind. And if you haven't played before, Best Fiends is a free to download puzzle game where you solve thousands of fun puzzles and also collect these cute characters called fiends. This is the type of game that really gets your brain going, and if I'm ever stuck on any levels or if Brian's ever stuck on any levels, we like to swap phones and try to solve it for each other. I don't know if you guys are the same way, but I love having the game music on as I'm playing because it just is so much more gratifying, especially when you beat a level. Today's projects especially have a lot of dry time, so I'm definitely going to open my phone and play the games. If you follow me on Instagram, you guys probably saw that last month we went back to LA and we had the best time there. But with traveling, as I'm sure you know, there's a lot of waiting at the airport and the flight can feel like an eternity. So of course I was playing Best Fiends, which really helped me get my mind off of things. Plus I was able to beat a level that I was stuck on, so I was super pumped for that. If you guys would like to play too, the game is free to download and with my link in the description box, you'll actually get $5 worth of gold and energy when you beat level five. So make sure that you check that out so you can get that extra bonus. And remember, it's like friends without the R, best fiends. So go ahead and check it out. And now I'm gonna go grab some cardboard and we can get to DIY. All right, so for this project, I want to recreate a shelf that I've seen online. These go for about 150 bucks. They're really cute and also functional because because it allows you to have some vertical storage and I wanna to try to make that with cardboard. So I grabbed different cardboard pieces I've been saving. You guys know we just moved so we've been ordering a bunch of things. So I have a lot of cardboard that I've been hoarding up, especially if I can find some flat pieces and also a cardboard that is really sturdy. Like this is gonna be perfect for making the base. I'm gonna figure out all the different measurements and how big I want this. But since we're DIYing this, you can make this as large or as small as you want it to. So let's see what we can make. So for this step, it's probably best to use a utility knife just because of how thick the cardboard is. And I also find that this is gonna help retain the structure of the cardboard so that we can keep it nice and sturdy. You can make this as large or as small as you need it to be to fit your own space and mine is about 15 inches long by 6 inches wide. I have my two pieces here and basically what I'm gonna do is just to glue them together that way it makes a thicker board. So together these are 7 eighths of an inch but you can make this however wide you want it to be. I think this looks pretty good so we're gonna keep it at that and then I also wanted to make a note that this cardboard is pretty thick but it's also very sturdy so it's not really bending when I put pressure on it but if you have cardboard that looks maybe like this and it's pretty flimsy and easily bendable, then I would say not to use it for a project like this. If you did wanna make this with anything else, you could also use MDF board or also wood, but I really wanna to try to make this whole thing out of cardboard, so this is plenty enough. Okay, next we're going to need a long piece of cardboard and this is gonna be the arch that is gonna, you know, go on top. Just make sure that it is the same width and you should be good to go. So I think with this, I'm actually just gonna use my scissors because that's just easier. To create the art shape, I'm going to fold the cardboard every half inch or so, and this is going to make it super easy to bend. Now I'm using a combination of hot glue and tape to adhere all the sides together.
So this is the base shape that we are going for. This looks pretty proportional to me. And if you wanted to, you could make it even taller and more even like an actual arch. But I really like this semi round circle moment right here. And obviously right now it's very flimsy. So we're gonna go ahead and take some of these other pieces that we've cut and just glue it right on top. I actually ran out of some of that cardboard that was going to be wide enough. So I have some longer pieces that are a tiny bit smaller. So if you see, it's just like maybe half an inch smaller, but I'm just gonna sandwich it in between some of these wider pieces so you won't even see that and that way it is still even. If you're trying this at home and you don't have the exact cardboard pieces that you need, that is totally fine. You can find something else and it'll work just fine. When it comes to the gluing step, you can use any stronghold glue that you'd like. I'm just using hot glue because it cools down faster, meaning there is less dry time for me to worry about. And if you choose to use glue, my biggest tip here is just to make sure that you hold it down as it cools, just to make sure that everything stays nice and in place. With materials like cardboard, it's really easy for it to lift and then you'll end up with some gaps in between the layers and we definitely don't want that. Okay, so here it is. I'm really happy with this. This actually turned out better than I thought. And honestly, it was super easy and fast to do. If you remember the Arches Project, that is very similar to this, but that required a lot of cuts in comparison to this one, which was basically a bunch of rectangles. And look at how good it is. I'm really, really happy with this. And the next thing I wanna do is just to cover some of those edges. I'm gonna use my tape for this, but alternatively, you also can do a paper mache across if you would like to, but I think this is pretty smooth, so we probably don't have to do that extra step. The tape is really gonna help us smooth out these rougher edges and also give us a little bit of structure as well. To give it extra stability and to cover up those seams, I taped right along the edges and I'm using painter's tape here just because it's all I really had, but once I ran out, I did go in with my cheap little mask tape for the back. I would definitely recommend a masking tape that's not from the dollar store, but any type of papery tape will work here. I love using cardboard as a material to DIY with because it's just so easy to work with. You don't need any fancy tools to use it. Just a pair of scissors will do the trick. And not to mention it's cheap or in this case free, and it is such a great way to upcycle your boxes into something new. And I hope that sharing these project ideas along with all the other cardboard DIYs so far on my channel inspires you to look at it in a different way and make something amazing with it. Here it is after it's all taped up. It is so solid, like, listen. It's like not moving, it's really sturdy. And honestly, I think this will hold up once we put it on the shelf. This next step is optional, but I have so much mesh tape that I'm actually going to cover at least the top and then the shelf with it. This already is a really smooth surface, so I'm afraid that once I put the joint compound on top, it actually will be really messy looking. And I think if we give it some grip, it's going to hold a lot better, but you can totally skip this part. I'm just doing it because I have a whole bunch of it and I'm not really patching any walls, so I might as well use it. Alright, so I'm going right on top of the entire piece with our joint compound and one thing that I've learned is to work inside out just so that you don't get joint compound everywhere. So I'm starting with the shelf and then the ceiling I guess of the shelf and that way I can work inside out. I love using a palette knife for this step because it allows you to spread out everything evenly and gives you a lot of control. And I noticed that the mesh tape really did help out with that shelf part especially because it ended up making this part really, really flat and everything was nice and smooth when I went over it. With this shelf in particular, I'm doing light layers and I'm going to let that dry before building upon it, especially when it comes to the actual shelf. I want that to be nice and smooth, but if you wanted to, you can totally add a lot of texture here. That is definitely going to add some depth as well as an organic look to it. So if that's what you're into, I would say totally go for it. My only warning is to not put it on too thick just because it is prone to cracking. I did about three coats of the joint compound before it had nice coverage on it. And since we're putting a very thin layer, it's going to dry to the touch about after an hour. So building these layers happens quickly. 
Before moving on to the next step, we want to wait at least a day for it to dry. So I'm going to let that sit out overnight. Okay, so it is the next day now, and this is just looking so good. I'm very, very happy overall with the structure. It is very sturdy, but also lightweight because it's just cardboard and joint compound. Right now, there is some nice textures going on, so if you wanna keep that, you can leave it at that. But I think you guys know me by now, and you know that I have to smooth this out just a little bit. So I'm gonna go over it with some sandpaper and just kind of get rid of any uneven edges. You're going to see some, especially on the corners and the edges here and I'll also show you how easy it is to go on the back side and make some holes that way you can hang it up on the wall. I'm going to use a combination of a sanding sponge and sandpaper depending on the area of the arch just to make sure that we get a nice smooth finish and with the sanding step I'm not looking for it to be completely smooth and dry but I am mostly getting rid of those areas with those rough edges you're going to see a little bit of build up so we want to make sure that we get those lines as crispy as possible and this way it's going to look more professional and finished. After this step, you could choose to paint it if you'd like to, but I'm going to leave it as is to match our inspiration pick and this project is done. And to actually hang the project, all I'm going to do is to create two holes on the backside with a drill bit and I'm going to make sure that these are leveled and to ensure your nails are exactly where they need to be on the wall, you can go ahead and mark off a piece of tape. That way you could just hammer it right into place. If you want this to hold more weight, I would totally suggest using L brackets on the bottom and now we can go ahead and style it up. All right guys, how good did our art shelf turn out? This is one of those projects that's just so easy to do, but I think it looks incredible and totally unique. This is a great piece to add some personality to an empty wall or even to place it on a tabletop if you don't wanna hang it up and I just absolutely love how this turned out. So you can see behind me that I have more cardboard left, so I do have another idea for you guys, and that is to create a mold with your leftover cardboard. This is super easy to do, and as an example, I wanted to create some bookends. So here is the inspo pick. I think these are really cool because they have different layers of colors. So you can customize these however you want, and I think these are gonna look amazing in our office. So that is the goal. I'm going to pick a piece of cardboard that will work well. Should I use this giant one? Do I have anything smaller? Ah! Okay, I like this box. Seems pretty sturdy, so we're gonna use this one. So I'm gonna start by drawing off the design and then we can create a template and make four of those to make our two bookends. I'm measuring six inches on the straight edge and then I marked two inches at the top and four inches at the bottom. And from there, we're gonna draw a line down from the top to create a trapezoid shape similar to the inspiration piece. Then I'm cutting it out and using it as a template to create three more. Now that we have the width piece, I'm going to cut this into smaller pieces that are the same length of each of the sides. So I'm just putting it up against there and measuring it. And we're gonna do this for all the sides except for the bottom since we're going to leave that open. Everything's cut and ready to go. So we're gonna make this a 3D shape by taping it all together. And here I'm using duct tape just because it has a strong hold. And I'm gonna tape this along the sides to create a 45 degree angle with each of the pieces. Our molds are done. They're not looking the cutest, but the bookends are really gonna be cute in a few hours. I'm gonna mix up some cement and we're going to color that. And when we pour this, we're actually going to put this upside down 
and since this does have a flat bottom that makes it a lot easier so that it's super stable but before we do that I actually wanted to mark the inside that way I know exactly how far to pour each one of those layers to make sure that everything is even because it's kind of hard to tell when you're pouring from above placing my ruler right inside and I'm just gonna mark about inch and a half Then another inch and a half. So now when we pour, I know that each layer is going to be exactly where I need it to be. And now we are ready for the concrete. We are ready to pour. So I have my cement ready to go. And I usually do a four to one ratio of the cement to water. You wanna make sure that you don't have too much water because this will crack if there's just too much moisture. And I'm gonna give that a good mix. For this first layer, I wanted to create a light brown color, so I'm using acrylic craft paint and I added in white as well as some yellow and brown, and this is really gonna help warm up that gray color. We're gonna pour the cement straight into our mold and we really just need a little bit of this first color. And to ensure that we don't get any little air bubbles, I'm going to tap it against the table and also on the sides. With my popsicle stick, I'm dragging some of the cement upwards to create wavy lines. So that way it's not going to be a straight line and this is gonna look more similar to the inspiration pick. You just wanna spread it right onto that cardboard and it should be good to go. So we're gonna let that sit for a few hours to dry down. Okay, so at this point, this is gonna be hard enough to move onto the second layer. And for this color, we just needed black. So I'm going to make my life easier and use a black cement pigment. This works really well to get a true black color. And I'm going to basically repeat the steps previously in mixing and then putting it into the mold. And of course we have to create that little wavy edge again. I waited a couple more hours before moving on to the last layer and this one is going to be our solid cement layer so we're not gonna add any colors to it. But I did have to pour in layers because I didn't have a big enough container for all the cement but I totally would suggest for you guys to just have a larger container for this last section because it's going to be a lot easier so there's no discrepancies in all the layers. Creating all these different colors is a fun way to change it up and create contrasting colors for this DIY. But of course you can always do one solid color or even marble some of the layers together by pouring two colors at once. I think that looks really amazing as well. And even depending on the colors that you choose for this project, you can turn it into any style that you would like. I can imagine it with a beautiful terracotta color if you want something more earthy and boho. There are a lot of ways that you can customize with cement and I have a whole video on cement DIYs. So if that's something that you guys want to watch, definitely check it out on my channel. After letting this dry overnight, our cement has hardened and it's ready to be demolded from our DIY mold. And to do this, I just use a knife to cut along the tape and that should do just the trick. Once you get it started, it should be a little bit easier to get that off. So I'm just going to pull that cardboard away and voila, our layered colors look amazing. And I actually was kind of nervous that these wouldn't come out well. So I was very happy to open the mold and find these beautiful wavy layers. If you find that some of the cardboard pieces are sticking onto the cement like I am here, you can go ahead and wet it with some water and that should come right off. To clean this up a bit, I'm using a wet sanding sponge around the entire piece. And again, we really want those crisp edges. And I like the wet sanding method just because it's going to minimize all that dust flying around. So I would totally recommend this method to you guys. And also as a quick reminder, while you're working with cement, especially dry cement, make sure that you're wearing a mask and stay protected. And after this step, you can choose to seal it or to finish it with a glossy top coat, whatever you'd like here. I really love this matte look, so I'm going to give it a quick spray of a matte top coat and we are ready to go. So it looks like I'm going to need to get more books because now I wanna fill up an entire shelf and use these bookends. They're industrial and modern, but still add a nice organic stoneware look. I just think they look so good and I'm very happy that we were able to recreate this piece with just some cardboard and cement. I hope you liked today's video and I would love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. I always love chatting with you all so feel free to drop a comment below and if you recreate any of the projects on my channel don't forget to share it over on Instagram. I love seeing them and I of course am going to put them on the screen here. I love seeing all of your projects and it just makes my day whenever I get a tag notification. So thank you for sharing your creativity with me and thank you so much for watching and supporting my channel and that's it for me today. Stay inspired and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!